Under the trees near the bridge. Where do you think you're going? Turn off the light, Miss Mason, and run! Shadows, priest. Smash through that back gate. My job here is done, Miss Grayson. The police will protect you from now on. How can I ever thank you? As before, by forgetting that I was here and keeping your place protected with reliable guards. Yes. Oh, by the way, there's a man locked up in your closet. Locked up? Yes. Will you see that he's released? Yes, I will. The man in the closet, that would be Mr. Axford? It not only would be, Cato, it is. was there. Face to face we were. And me with me hands and feet tied. <laughs> You've got the green hornet on the brain, Michael. I think he's beginning to get you. Maybe you got something there. I, Gary, I dream about the spalpeen. I'm telling you, Reed, if I didn't have the evidence in my own eyes, I wouldn't believe there was such a creature as the green hornet. Well, why not, Michael? He comes and goes like a spook. Bullets have no effect on him, and that car of his was made by nothing human. Excuse me, boss. Emergency. Just got a call from the reporter on the police beat. There's a riot in a new building. Gunnigan wants me to take Oxford here and cover it. Well, go to it. My car's at the side door. Take it easy, Oxford. I don't want to get smashed up. Sure, I used to drive a patrol wagon. Yeah, you keep driving like this, it'll be hauling you off in one of them. <laughs> Learn to drive. First one at school. I don't think I don't see. Michael Axford. And who ever told you you could drive a car? Now hold your tongue, Sullivan. Sure, it's many a time you rode behind me in the old tie wagon. Many's the time. Too many. It was you that give me these gray hairs. That's not what I heard given to you. Well, what did you hear given to me? First man, have you no shame? Do you want me to tell the world? Be off with you now. Before I run you in for impersonating a motorist. Impersonating? Get out with you now. The building that was attacked today is not the only one that I've had trouble on. Well, Mr. Evans, do you know of any reason why your building should have been singled out? Yes, I do. What is it? I'm not a member of the International Builders Syndicate. What does that have to do with it? The 
syndicate gets most of its contracts by low bids. But it makes big profits by using inferior materials. Many of their buildings are a public menace. They've had several serious accidents. Well, there have been accidents in your buildings, too, haven't there? Yes, but they were caused deliberately by the crooks. So that it wouldn't appear that the syndicate's buildings are the only ones poorly constructed. Yes? Axford and Lowry are back from that assignment. Axford says it's important that he see you. Send a bell. All right. On your way, man of action. Why don't you take all day? Where's Lowry? He's given the dope to the rewrite man. He'll be here in a minute. I wanted to Say, take... Do you know Mr. Evans, the builder? Oh, how do you how do? How do you do? Sir? I nearly got myself messed up just now trying to protect one of your buildings. You saw damage being done? Both to the building and to myself also. Do you think the attack was deliberate? Of course it was. One man was pouring water on bags of cement, and from the corner of my eye, I saw another one baiting on a hot hoist with a sledgehammer. Were any of the men caught? I caught one of them, but his gang rescued him. But I'd know them fellas again if ever I put my eye on them. <laughs> Private joke, or can you tell us? You'd think that riot was a personal attack on Axford to hear him tell it. He's inside dramatizing it to the boss right now. Go on in. And with a little help, I'd have caught all the hoodlums single-handed. <laughs> Oh, Lowry. This is Mr. Evans, the builder. And Lowry's one of our reporters here. Now, Mr. Evans, you claim that the syndicate is putting up defective buildings. Now, doesn't that imply dishonesty in the city inspector's office? No, the building department isn't exactly dishonest, but it is very inefficient. It indicates more than inefficiency when dangerous buildings are certified as safe. This isn't for publication, but I think that several of the deputy inspectors are easily influenced, to put it mildly. Can you name any particular inspectors? I'd rather not. Mr. Evans... The Sentinel is always ready to attack rackets when it has the proper ammunition. But it can't risk libel suits by publishing rumors and personal opinions. But I know that everything that I claim is true. Yes, but you can't prove it. No, if I could have, I'd have gone to the district attorney instead of coming here. Them thugs were out to wreck his building all right. Granted, Michael, but give me facts, not rumors. Well, didn't I see a man pouring water on cement and another with a sledge? We'll print that and anything else you dig up that you can verify. I'll send Miss Case in on your way out. That sounds like our execute. Come on, Mike. I, you don't quit that. I... Yes, Mr. Reed? Case, I want you to get the name or names of all the city inspectors on those new buildings where the accidents have occurred recently and concentrate on all those erected by the International Builder Syndicate. Yes, sir. It was a mistake to pull that raid in the daytime. I knew it was risky, but I was sure it'd make Evans fall into line and join our International Builder Syndicate. The raid was broken up too quickly. Hit it, Evans, again, but next time at night, as I advised you before. Okay, Chief. But I'm betting our next raid on Evans will compel him to join our syndicate. Oh, the International is a good graft. It may prove to be the richest of our many angles. Oh, there were a couple of Sentinel reporters at the Rumpus this morning. They almost caught one of our men. We've got to stop this interference from the Sentinel. Tell the boys to turn the heat on that bunch again. Here's the name of the city inspector you wanted. Tenney, eh? I know the name. I think I know the man. Is Axford ready yet? He'll be right up. Goodbye, Case. Goodbye. Come on, Michael. It's always a thrill to see an addition go out. You know, Mike, uh, a newspaper can do a lot of good. It can match, sir. Now, get after it. I'll stay here and wait for the other car.
looks that was wrecked in Evans' building this morning. Was it? Hey! Away. Yes, unfortunately. Why do you suppose them roughnecks mobbed that truck? Well, that's easy, because the Sentinel's been attacking the rackets. Oh, yes. Come on, let's go back and see what's happening. Oh, boy, am I going to be stiff by the time I get home. Everything under control? Yes, thanks to your help, Mr. Reed. Well, I was here too, you know, until I took a party over that barrel. <laughs> ah, thanks for your help, officer. Too bad they all got away. They were sure a bunch of slippery devils. Stay word that. Come on, Michael. Yes. You have been in an accident? It was no accident. They did it on purpose. It's nothing serious, Cato. Come on, help me get cleaned up. Hornets calling on a Mr. C. Smith tonight. Reed. Oh, I couldn't find any record in my book of that crook we lost today, so I'm going down to headquarters and look over there at Rogue's Gallery. You better have dinner first. Ah, oh, sure, I'll neither eat nor sleep till I lay my hands on that spalpy. That's the spirit that makes ace report. Yes. We messed up some Sentinel delivery trucks today. We'll not only smash his trucks, but his buildings, too, if Reed doesn't mind his own business. Reed and his bodyguard tried to get Smith. It's fortunate for us he didn't. Smith's a good worker, but he might break under pressure. What about the Evans angle? We've got to keep right after him. We're paying another of his jobs a visit tonight. The new commercial building on Market Street. Your gas gun, sir. Tonight, Cato, the Green Hornet calls on Mr. Smith. Smith's house. I'll see if he's home. Wait. There's a car coming out of the driveway. Well, that's Smith. We'll follow it. This is a good place. Close in on him. Hey, what's the big idea? Green Hornet. You're all right, Smith. What have we got on for tonight? Another wrecking job? What do you mean? I was just, I was just going to wait. stalling. What building were you going to work on tonight? Then I tell you. Quit what? lying. Hey, don't you take on me, please. I'll tell you. It's a new commercial building on Market Street. Who's handling the job of wrecking it? I don't know his name. Lying will get you nowhere. Quick, who is he? Danny, he handles all the jobs. Does he work for the International Syndicate? Yeah. Who's the big boss? I don't know. I take my orders from Danny. Move over. What are you going to do to me? I'm going to turn you into the police. They ain't got nothing on me. You're wrong, Smith. They've got plenty on you. Find a telephone that I can use safely. We'll tell Axford where to find Smith. Headquarters. Is Mike Axford there? No, I don't want to speak to him. Just tell him there's a man he wants to meet in a parked car in the 200 block on Pine Street. Jim, look there. That's the Green Hornet.
How do they expect us to catch a thing like that? Good work. We've lost them. Where to now, sir? The new commercial building. To smash the building rocket. Duck out and lay low. I sure will. Thank you, Mr. Stanick. Get going. Wait a minute. Better go out the back way. Who was that? The Green Hornet. Right, Stanick. How do you know me? That doesn't matter. The fact remains that I do, and I know what you're up to. What do you want? I want you to go through this building with me. What for? Never mind what for. Get moving. Leave that lantern there. Stop here. What do you want? You're connected with a criminal syndicate. Your job is to wreck buildings. I want the name of the man at the head of your organization. Fat chance you're Stanley getting that, even if I knew it. But you're going to... Yes, you do. Your expression betrayed you. Speak up. We've got to get out of here. Why? Those men are going to blow up this building. I thought you said you didn't know them. They work for me. We've got to get out of here. This ought to bring Evans into the syndicate. Yeah, he ought to be brought to his senses now. Yeah, take that down. We're not leaving this place until you tell me what I want to know. I can't do that. You've got to. Come on out. Get to the car. Don't call those men. I tell you, we'll be killed if we don't get out of here. Are you going to talk? I don't know who that you... Don't lie to me. I'm not. You've got to believe me. I take my orders from a young-looking guy with gray hair, a scar on his face, calls himself Bordine. Oh, All right, let's go. 